everyone. My name is Kalia Braxton. I am the branded strategy manager at Condé Nast Entertainment, where I oversee all of our social digital um, content for our style division. I'm excited to sit here today with Kelsey Marie, a content creator, and we'll be talking about all things social media, content creation. So I'll hand it over to Kelsey so Kelsey can introduce herself and then we'll jump straight in. Hi, my name is Kelsey. I am a content creator and the owner of the Jokeland Agency, which is a social media agency where we provide social media management, social media strategy, as well as content creation. I'm also a graduate of Winston-Salem State University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Oh my gosh, I'm a graduate of an HBCU too. I got that. I went to Spelman College and I graduated in 2016. <laughs> okay, so let's just jump straight in. Kelsey, how did you get started on um, social media? So social media came about really organically for me. Um, I've always loved taking photos and sharing it. And I take photos of whatever exhibits I go to, outfits I'm wearing, and just through organically posting it, brands started to reach out to me. And it was after, I think, like my first or second paid collaboration, I took it more seriously and I started to look up ways that I can turn it into a business. I also started looking up ways that I can pitch to brands that I wanted to work with. And since then, I would say about since like 2018, I have been consistently working as a content creator and as an influencer. But it all started organically through my love of photography and just sharing things that I, I genuinely loved with my, um, with my community on my Instagram profile. That's beautiful. Okay, so first things first. You loved it. You did something that you loved and you turned yes. it into a business. And I think that I hope that that's a takeaway that everyone takes from that part, that answer. Um, because once you find something that you love or that you're good at and you work at it, the thing, the rest will come, you know? So that's amazing that you just, you were doing what you were always doing and you made it make sense. And you know what's interesting? I think that a lot of people now, they want to get into it, not because they love it, but because they see uh, the free items that certain yeah. bloggers or influencers receive. And I think that a lot of people need to know how much work goes behind what you see someone post on Instagram. So if it's a paid collaboration, that person had to go through so many emails, mm -hmm. so much strategy, preparation. So you genuinely have to love it to continue doing it, in my opinion. I Trust me, I understand. As you're on the other side, I sit on the other side of that, the, the part where it's like, who are we going to work with? What is she going to do? How does that make sense? And that is a back and forth. So you definitely have to be, you know, ready and, and, and really open to all of the things that come with it, not just the glitz and glam of the final post. Um, what would you say your process for content creating is? Like, do you wake up and say, this is what I'm doing today? Do you plan? Do you make a calendar? Like, how do you know what's next? What you're going to post? What do you want to show? So to be completely honest, I'm not a planner. Okay. I'm not the most like organized person. I do my best work on the fly. Mm -hmm. But this year, I tried to be more organized with my content creation just because my work with my agency got a lot busier. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to just go outside or get dressed and take photos. So whenever I have a campaign, I use my Google Calendar. I have to schedule it. I then, um, if I can't just use my tripod, because I take a lot of my photos myself, I have to schedule a time with my friends so that they can come yeah. to whatever location and assist me. And then about two days before I start shooting, I go location scouting. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of my photos to be very minimalist um, and like have some kind of art or architecture component to it so that it can really make the outfits that I put together pop. And so location scouting before the shoot day is a really great way to avoid burnout, avoid stress, and you just know where you're going, you know what time works, you know when the sun is the best, and that's that's pretty much my process. And then afterwards, I go through, I select the photos that I like. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I review what the deliverables are by the brand and make sure that everything is aligned. And then I go through my editing process. I have a consistent aesthetic, which means that there's like a color palette that I go by. There's a way that I like my skin color to look. I want it to look very brown and true to what my skin color is in real life. And um, I edit according to that, according to what my personal likes are, but also keeping the brand in mind and making sure that it's something that they would be proud to share on their pages as well. And then once I have the content, I deliver it to the brand by either a Google Drive or WeTransfer. Um, and then I just keep in contact with them through email, make sure that everything is fine. And if they ever need edits, I would have to um, go back and reshoot or find another photo that would best suit what they want. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my process. I wish we had more time to get into that part because the brands definitely come back and tell you what they like, what they don't like. And you need to, you know, if you if you did the shoot last week and it's this week, you got to put back on those clothes. You got to get back to that site. You need to figure it exactly. out. Like, exactly. um, and something that you mentioned was having a friend help you. So you're not, you are a one woman show, but team, there is no I in team. So you still have a little team that helps you get the job done. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so then I'm sure everyone is wondering, like, Tell us your process to building followers, like times to post and hashtags and photo editing. Like, do you have a system? Do you just post? Do your followers love you and they know, okay, Kelsey posted, like, what's going on? So I think that now it's it's difficult to build a following on Instagram. Mm. Um, TikTok, I know is a lot easier, but also like, I don't be having time to make TikTok videos um, consistently. So for Instagram, I would say the best way to grow is to stay true to what your niche is. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I know that people get discouraged because they may not get like a lot of likes or they're not growing consistently and they try to hop on the different trends and do the dances or whatever is the current social media trend. But I think that if you stay true to who you are, what your niche is, and what you genuinely enjoy to post about, your community and the people who enjoy the same things, they will find you. For hashtags, I recommend using like about 15, 13 to 15 hashtags. And um, in order to hide it, you can put it in the comment section. And then also just engaging with other accounts. Be yeah. organic about it, be genuine. And just don't try too hard. If, if you don't feel comfortable dancing in a video, then you don't have to do that. Just do what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel true to yourself. And I think that's when people will really shine and your account will grow. Yeah. And heavy on the, like, focusing on um, engaging. I know, like, if you guys ever noticed yeah. like, brands on TikTok, you ever see, like, McDonald's or Wendy's or somebody, like, responding in the comment like tiktok for me is in fun yes. for the comment section like yes. i like the videos but i want to know like what's going on what are people really thinking and um that's also a way to grow uh followers just engagement so definitely a good one well i know Wait, one more thing so like i think it's really important on your post yeah. if people are commenting with a bunch of hard eyes or whatever to always always be appreciative of that and to like and comment back and also a lot of times you may get discouraged because you have 2000 and you're saying oh i only have 2000 followers but in reality, if 2,000 people were to come into your house right now, that's a ton of people. Yeah. So it's also about looking at it from both sides. You mm -hmm. don't have as much as you want right now, but use the audience that you do have and find out how you can keep attracting them to the point where they share with their community your page and your content. Yep. 100% in alignment with you. Um, okay. Okay. So last one, because I know time is running out, I want you to, can you give the audience like an idea of what a week of content could look like for them? What could be like some of the things that are benefit, uh, beneficial to them to be posting on social media? We're guessing that they are all trying to jump into this space. And so what, where can they start? What does that look like? 
So I know the majority of you watching are currently in school. Mm-hmm. I think that a great thing to do would show day in your life videos. So you can make these short videos on TikTok. What does a day in the life as a fashion major look like mm-hmm. or as a mass communications major look like? And you can show like your wake up time, you're on your way to campus, what are you eating? And then prepping for projects that you may have. Um, I think that's really important. And then also future employers, they look at your social media. And if you show that you are actively doing what you're applying for, I think that that would be a major key and help you secure that job as well. Um, In terms of getting brand partnerships, I think it's all about being consistent. And then really curating your content to where you're posting about what you genuinely love, but you're keeping a certain aesthetic in mind. And if you want to work with brands, I think it's important to keep your voice in mind. So when writing copy, staying really true to who you are, not um, engaging in comments or um, conversations that brands could potentially look at and then write you off. So I think that's important as well first of all Kelsey thank you for today like this was thank huge. you yeah this was like yeah so if 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 I could go back to 2016 like and someone I watched this kind of conversation like I'd probably be like way ahead I think um your insights were head on especially guys the um comment part like you guys mm-hmm. have to engage engagement will boost your reach like you need to be you know what I mean like interacting with your followers I don't care if you only have 500 of them say hello to all of them when they say hello to you um and so that was like amazing and I hope that everyone uh, is leaving this conversation full because you literally dropped all the gems and follow Kelsey as well because you can learn from her as as the journey goes on so thank you so much Kelsey for sitting here and talking with me no yeah and this is amazing I actually We'll be hitting you up after this. Um, And everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you.